back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltori, and I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler. For the last several years, I've been featuring each figure or king's daughters and getting to know their stories a little bit better. There are over 700 of them. We're now on episode 247. You do the math, not bad. We've got a long way to go, though. Before we begin, let me show you ways you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know. Subscribe, like, and notify. The next three are ways to help the channel grow. We have coffee and Patreon, which are external platforms that you can access. And on my website, How Roots Will Travel, we have a PayPal button that you can also use to donate what you would like. And I want to thank all of you who have done so thus far. I really appreciate each and every one of you for being there and supporting me and your kind words. Really, really, I'm thankful. So with that being said, let's get started and explore episode 247. Now turn our attention to episode 247 of Marie Coppel. She is a viewer request, and I do not have her in any of my files, so it was really interesting to get to know Marie. Let's have a look at where she comes from. So Marie was born in 1646 in Paris, France. Her parents were Jacques Capel and Denise Valois. The fourth arrondissement, of which she was part of, is also known as Hôtel de Ville, and is situated on the right bank of the River Seine. The fourth arrondissement contains the Renaissance era Paris City Hall, Place des Vosges, Pompidou Center, and Le Marais. And it also, the eastern parts of the Ile de la Cité, uh, which includes Notre Dame de Paris, the church, as well as Ile saint marie are included within the fourth arrondissement. Remember that arrondissement means circle, and you can see that Paris is laid out in circles. The fourth arrondissement is known for its little streets, its cafe and shops, but now is regarded by Parisians as expensive and congested. It's desirable for those wanting old buildings and a mix of many, many cultures. Now, the church that she would have been baptized in, L'Église Saint-Jacques de la Boucherie, or the Church of St. James of the Butchery, was a church that was built around the 12th century. Its name was derived from the patron butchers who did their trading in Les Halles Market, not so far away. The church started off as a small establishment, and it was continually being expanded, more so between the 14th and 16th century. It was during the latter age that it was finally completed, a magnificent structure, structure adorned in Gothic architecture, this church was a place of worship for many religious people. Besides being the church of the patron butchers, it was a destination of choice for pilgrims who were not who were only about to start their pilgrim journeys. They would congregate at the church before they set out on what is commonly referred to as the Way of St. James. In the early 1500s, it was decided that a tower needed to be built, not only to amplify the worth of the church, but to make it a monument that could be appreciated by all. The Tour Saint-Jacques was constructed between 1509 and 1523, and it rose above the church and stood at the height of about 52 meters. The tower is highly ornamental and is adorned in, with many unique figures. And the tool, and it is, was demolished, of course. This church was demolished in 1797 by a little thing called the French Revolution. And they left the tower. And that is what you see in that picture. And that is what remains of the destroyed Church of Saint-Jacques de la Boucherie, which is now considered a national historic monument. So that is what is left of the church that baptized our fée du roi. After her death, she arrived on the Jean Baptiste on June 30th, 1669. She carried with her a dowry of about 450 pounds. That's a whopping amount. So very, very interesting where she's coming from. And where did she, you know, what was her father and all that more research definitely needs to go into this one. The groom that she would select and who would select her, his name was Guillaume Fagot, and he was born in 1635 in La Chateau Doré in France. His parents were Hilaire Fagot and Marie Veille. Now, this commune is found in the Pays de la Loire section, region of France, and inside that, it is part of the Vendée department. The town of La Chateau Doré 
which was at the heart of the Vendée region and, and part of the Vendée War, has very ancient origins. I love this picture on the bottom left. It really depicts what I perceive as kind of a medieval um, aspect to the town. And the church where I believe he was baptized, I don't have concrete proof, um, has existed since the 12th century and is called the Église saint quitteri à la Tardière. And this is, it's not quite in the commune, but the church that was, ex that had existed before burned down. And so I was, I spent a lot of time actually trying to find the church, but please, if anyone has more information on this, I would love to include this as well in my notes. So please let me know if you have any information about the particular churches in this very small community. It's about 2,600 that live there now. Guillaume would arrive in New France at least as early as 1664. He is listed in the 1666 census. I just want to draw your attention to the title, Nom des habitants volontaires non mariés ou mariés en France. So these are the names of the habitants or uh, people living in the volunteers who are not married or who have been married in France. And you can see that he is listed there as the age of 31. So he is there working presumably off a, um, the engagé, the, contr the contract that he would have signed in order to uh, you know, pay for his passage. And then at the end of that contract, he would then be free to either return to France or um, get land and, and would make money and, and begin a new life, and that new life would involve presumably getting married. Now, getting to the altar for these two was a little interesting. Um, before she married Guillaume, she signed a contract with a man named Jean-Philippe, but that was um, annulled, and then she did um, sign a contract with Guillaume. Guillaume, on his side, had um, signed a marriage contract on the 18th of October, and with the fille du roi Jeanne Léonard Genet, who we have not yet profiled, but it was annulled the very next day when he entered into the contract with Marie. So this is just an interesting kind of, okay, let's get married. And they were definitely two people who wanted to be married. And they were on the 21st of October, 1669, at Quebec City. So let's review a little bit about Quebec City. This is where they would settle. It's the capital city of the province of Quebec in Canada. Half a million people lived directly in Quebec City. Quebec was originally named by the Algonquins who named the area Quebec, K-E-B-E-C, which in their native language meant where the river narrows. Quebec City lies where the St. Lawrence River narrows. Samuel de Champlain founded a French settlement here in 1608 and called it Ville de Quebec, or Quebec City. The city walls which surround it still date back to this time period, making Quebec City the only city with remaining city walls north of Mexico City in North America. There's so much to see in Quebec City. I just wanted to illustrate two different ones where, where I believe they would have walked Marie and and um, would have walked these streets and definitely Guillaume would have would have experienced it. And so they, the, on the bottom left, we have what is known as the, probably the oldest uh, French shopping center, the oldest commercial district, the Petit Champlain, it's called. And so this is just a historic area. And then this particular house on your upper right is La Maison Jacquette. This house is the oldest surviving private residence in Quebec. It dates from 1675. And if you'd like to tour it, it's home to a famous restaurant, appropriately called Aux Anciens Canadiens, roughly translated to our old Canadians or to our historic Canadiens. Um, and here's a map of Quebec from a more vintage, if you will. And then on the upper left, we have a depiction of Quebec around 1700. So it was absolutely the capital of New France and was a bustling and, and busy place. On to have four children. We have Marie Madeleine, who married Denis Jourdain and had five children, all of whom made it to adulthood. 
We have Louis, who married Claire Francoise Chartier, and would have eight children, six of whom made it to adulthood. We have Marie, who would die at the age of 15. And we have Marie Angelique, who died before the 1681 census. Guillaume would pass away sometime between July and October of 1677. He was 42 years old. He and Marie would have been married less than eight years. Just a really tragic, tragic event. Let's see what she will do next. The next groom to enter her life, his name was Claude Renard de, de Laurier, and he was born in 1637 in Alger, France. His parents were Nicolas Renard and Louise Thibault. Alger is a city about 200 miles southwest of Paris. It's now part of the main et noir département. Before the French Revolution, it was in the capital of, it was the capital of the province of Anjou. So it's part of the Pays de la Loire region, and inside that, it is the main et noir region. So you can see the circles there. Alger has a rich and resplendent history, not only with the Plantagen dynasty, which was the English, but also as a place where education and philosophy bloomed, particularly during the reign of King René of Anjou, who was born in Alger at the castle that you see before you on the left. The church of saint michel la Palou d'Alger was a Romanesque church of the 10th century located in the city of Angers in France. The church was destroyed at the beginning of the 19th century and only the presbytery remained standing. So that's the middle picture. It has been listed as a historic monument uh, since 1947. The church itself was founded in 996. Can you believe how long? And it was built how long it has stood, built at the end of the 10th century while the Angers were slowly recovering from the Viking invasions. The Church of Saint-Michel de Palou bears witness to the urban renewal that was beginning, built in the Romanesque style. The church was enlarged in the 13th century. The church where he would have been baptized is pictured here and is called L'Église Saint-Jacques les Angers and dates from that period. The castle called Chateau d'Angers is probably the castle I need to see so far from all the ones we have seen. This castle was originally built by the Romans as a fortress. A castle was built here in the 9th century and became an important part of the protection against invaders. The English used it during their rule in the 12th century and then it was captured and used by the French. By the 13th century it was expanded to the size it now occupies. This church has had so many uses throughout the, the centuries. Used as a church, a military Academy and even into the Second World War where it was used as an armory. Today there are tours for this castle and it houses the largest collection of medieval tapestries in the world. So this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal place where he would have been from. So Claude comes to New France and we're not sure exactly when. We do know that he entered into a marriage contract with the fille du roi Marie Ariot, who we have not yet profiled, in 1670. So we know that he was here at that time. He was a vinegar maker, which I found fascinating. I was able to create that image with AI. And um, just kind of like, since I love vinegar so much, I was like fascinated. And you can actually see that he's listed as a vinegar ma maker. We'll see it later on. So that was an interesting little tidbit. So Marie and Claude were married November 23rd, 1677 at Quebec City. They would have a child together, born 1679, but we believe that he passed away after the 1681 census. No more information is available for him. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about what I think I have a supposition, but I'll, first of all, let's move forward in the story. On the 4th of January, 1681, Marie was found dead, not in her home or in the hospital. She was found in the home of Pierre Biron, who was an officer of the Prévôté. Now, she was buried that very same day. I just find it really interesting because then I was, I was curious because I'm like, what's she doing there? So then I, I researched um, Pierre a little bit more and it looks like he was separated from his wife and there was issues 
So this was very interesting to me. And then in the 1681 census, I find Claude Renard alone, vinigri, 44 years. So nothing happened. Of course, nothing happened because he was an officer of a, you know, it's like being, you know, he was an officer of the privilege. So of course he, he could hide things. So I really don't know what happened. I just know that it's very unusual. And um, their son, Claude, because he's not listed with Claude, I, I'm just wondering if somehow he was adopted and somehow there was some issue. So I don't know. So this is just something for those of you who have this as you, or have Marie as your descendant. This could be something that, or your ancestor, I should say. I would think that that would be fascinating to explore a little bit more. And it does say in her death certificate, her death uh, burial record, that she was found in the home of, it doesn't say anything bad, but why was she there and what was she doing? And where is their son? So all of that is the mystery that surrounds Marie. As always, these are the resources that I use time and again. We have La Société des Filles du Roi. We have the Quebec Genealogical E-Society. We have Nos Origines, Wikitree, the Facebook group Les Filles du Roi Descendants, Genealogie Quebec, and the Société d'Histoire des Filles du Roi. All of these are incredible, incredible resources. Please let me know if there are any resources you'd like me to, to share. I'd love to act, include and add anything that you find particularly useful. I've got the addresses and the contacts in the notes if you need it. And so we end episode 247, a bit of a mystery. Now, remember, this lady came to New France with 450 pounds. We're not, there's a mystery there. What, what, did, what was her family all about? And to have survived the loss of two children and the loss of a, a husband and remarriage, and then somehow ended up dying at a very young age, in a very mysterious way. It's just a very, very unique kind of story. So I was glad to be able to tell it. Those of you who are descendants, because remember there were 28 descendants as of 1729. Love to see how that tree grew. So please post your comments below and let us know that you are a descendant of this remarkable lady. So thank you to Marie for what you managed to get done in the life that you led and were you came to new france and so your descendants thank you and we thank you as well and i'm also grateful for my patrons and supporters thank you to you and your support of me and this channel i really really am grateful so with that being said i will see you on episode 248 until then au revoir